So, I've done some stuff since we last spoke. Where we last left off, I had just finished building the NAS and had added a 10 gigabit switch. The next addition to the rack is a 48 port patch panel. The patch panel is used to cleanly redirect the ethernet cabling back to the machines in the actual rack. Essentially, it's just there to keep things clean in the front and just for like organization. There's lots of ways that you can manage ethernet cables. I just happen to like the way this looks best. Next, I added my 16 port gigabit switch, which I'll be using for anything that doesn't need to be super speedy. Also, this is where the internet comes in since my internet isn't faster than one gigabit anyways. This also allows me to save a port on the 10 gigabit switch. So I just need to have internet in on that switch and the one gigabit switch has internet in and internet out essentially just to the 10 gigabit switch, but could also go out to other switches as well. Finally, I just slapped my older 100 megabit per second uh, switch in the rear. I don't actually think I'm going to be using or needing this, so I'm really just storing it back there, to be honest. But uh, this is also power over Ethernet or PoE, so I might end up using it later for cameras or Raspberry Pis. It's just, some, it's just there if I need it, but also I'm just storing it back there. So much of the stuff on the server rack doesn't even cover like half of the depth. So there's actually a lot of storage area back there. There's a lot of things I might wind up putting in the back of the rack. One annoying aspect to having multiple machines is multiple inputs and outputs. You can certainly remote shell or remote desktop to control and operate them, but there are always downsides and nothing beats a direct connection with a desktop UI, in my opinion, especially when I'm working with multiple operating systems and things that have some sort of UI requirement. And while I can work completely within the shell, I would just usually rather work with a UI anyways. So along with consolidating power and networking, I'm also doing this for all the other machine I.O. To do this, I'm going to be using a KVM switch. KVM stands for keyboard, video, and mouse, and the switch part lets me switch between multiple machines using that same keyboard and mouse for all of them. The way this works is I plug my main mouse and keyboard into the KVM switch. The KVM switch that I have has 16 VGA out. Then I use these VGA cables that split out to VGA and USB and connect those to my machines. Most of my machines don't have VGA out, so I'm using DisplayPort and HDMI converters. The interesting thing here to me is the KVM switch is actually reporting the mouse and keyboard information out over VGA before it splits out to USB for the machine. I didn't actually know that was possible. Before mounting and wiring everything, I just wanted to make sure it would work as I intended and hoped for. So here I've just connected a Windows and an Ubuntu machine and can switch between the two of them with the push of a button. Some KVM switches also come with remotes, but I plan to use my KVM switch close enough to just press the buttons. So since everything's working, in the KVM switch goes. I didn't have a monitor mount quite yet, so I just sat the monitor on top of the NAS unit. Uh, it doesn't look great, but it works pretty well actually, and it fits. Next, in goes the universal rails to support the box machine. This is my 2X RTX 8000 machine, though I've put one of the RTX 8000s in the Puget machine temporarily. The box workstations can come with mounting hardware, but at the time that I got the box machine, I didn't need it, so I didn't get it. One nice thing about actual sliding rails, which you can get for the box machines, is they don't take up any space beyond the size of the casing that you're mounting. But in my case, the box machine is going to have to sit on top of universal rails. This means that there's the added thickness of the rail itself and then the rails that I'm using are also variable in size, so in the middle they actually double up in thickness. While small, this ends up adding up to being something like two-thirds of a centimeter or so in added thickness, which can honestly make or break a mount fitment, especially if you're using this mounting method in succession. So in this case, this added thickness is indeed enough to block me from actually getting the box in initially. So first, it's time to make some adjustments to the casing. Immediately I removed the top cover. This was always going to have to come off. I think it's really only here if the machine is being used in workstation form, but also because of this waviness, uh, it does add a little bit to the width of the machine when it's in like rack mount orientation. And then I also just slid off the side panel to the actual machine. With the official mounting hardware, I am pretty confident that this side panel could actually stay, but like I said, we've got a few extra millimeters with the rails that I'm using, so we need to free up any bits of space that we can. Also, I already know there's some wiggle room when it comes to the monitor mounting, so I loosened the NAS screws a bit and lifted that whole machine up just slightly, but that ever so slight 
bits that we can move those things. Um, that accounts for millimeters. So I moved that whole machine up slightly, retightened everything, and then retried the box again. And in this setup, the NAS will wind up kind of serving as the box's side panel. And the only time it will come off is if I pull out the box to do work on it or something like that. So this should still keep it closed and dust away and all that. And with that, the box machine finally fits. So from here, I wire up the box to the KVM switch and I boot that. At the moment, the box machine is actually on GTA data collection duty for the self-driving car project, so it's currently running Windows. The next order of business is to install a 1U drawer with cable holes in the back. I am, at least for now, going to be using this to house the keyboard and the mouse that controls the KVM switch and all of the machines. And I can confirm it works for my very official business. While the monitor can just sit on top of the NAS and be fully functional, it would look much cooler actually mounted on here. So here I have an adjustable depth monitor mount. So I disconnected the monitor getting ready to mount it and there's trouble in paradise. The flat part of the monitor stand comes off really easily, but the neck part seems stuck and I'm pretty confident that I'm going to have to like take the monitor apart just to get this neck part off. So I start unscrewing things and prying away. And sure enough, once I get inside, I can see that there's definitely no way this neck would have come off without opening up the actual casing of the monitor and unscrewing it, which is kind of weird for a monitor with VES amounts, but so be it because this monitor is special. I bought this monitor four years ago for one simple reason. It was the cheapest 1080p monitor available on Amazon. Little did I know that four years later, it would actually be just about the most perfect fit possible for my server rack. Especially nowadays with monitors and their casing being rounded or curved very often, it's actually really challenging to find one that fits between the 19 inch posts and is just a nice, simple, flat, square monitor. You can also look for actual rack mount monitors and such, but what you find is extremely painful and extremely expensive. Also just noting the photos that are used on these product pages is kind of weird. Like who's watching American football or nature documentaries on their server rack? It's just kind of weird. So besides monitors, there are also entire KVM consoles that act as the KVM switch, monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and they're all contained within one unit. The problem is these are all proprietary in like way too many ways. So if like the screen fails, what are you gonna do? What if the keyboard fails, etc.? They're all made by companies that I have no trust or faith in. They're extremely expensive and always have really shaky reviews and feedback. The one benefit that they have is they can take up as little as one U of rack space and oftentimes that is of the utmost importance. My KVM switch alone takes up one whole rack unit and then the monitor just in size is a bit over six units. You could stuff in things in two of those units and they would just be like blocked by the monitor. But no matter what, this whole setup that I'm doing is going to take up a good chunk of unit space. And that's why there are solutions that only take up one rack unit. But this is my rack and 42U is way more than I need right now anyways. I got 42U just because somehow it was the cheapest variant of the rack at the time. And I really enjoy having direct IO access and I do quite literally want to be able to monitor my machines in the rack. So for me, this is just the perfect setup. Next, while I do plan to convert a few more machines to be mounted in the rack, I don't quite yet have the cases for them but I'd still like to utilize the rack networking power and the convenience of the KVM switch. Plus, I'm also just really enjoying how easy it is to move everything around as one big unit. So I grabbed some scrap wood to cut and make a floor for the rack, just temporarily. So after cutting those pieces, I've got a nice simple floor to rest machines on. Again, I promise this is, this is temporary. So now things are definitely starting to come together, but there is one glaring issue here. I don't currently have anything I want to put here at the moment. I could put in that other switch that I put in the back, but that switch is blue and it just would look weird. So for now, in goes a blanking panel. I can figure out what to do with that later. Finally, I'm adding a 2U drawer. I'm gonna be using this to store rack specific things like cage nuts and some spare parts for the cases and the builds that are actually in the rack. The rack itself also came with quite a few cage nuts and bolts, but I'm starting to run low, so I wanted to get some more. And this is what I got. I actually ordered the same ones, they're the StarTech cage nuts and bolts, but they really look like they were salvaged from like a sunken ship or something. And the like the packaging and everything was fine. It like the actual shipping packaging. But but this the packaging here, like I, I don't know where these came from, but <laughs> pretty crazy. 
So I ended up buying these AC Infinity cage nuts and screws from the recommendation of someone instead. I just had zero faith in like sending these ones back and then reordering the same ones. Like I'm pretty sure they're all going to come from like the same warehouse. And I just felt like there's too much risk that the ones that I would get would <laughs> just be super rusted again. And at least these AC Infinity ones have no rust. Anyways, the rack is getting pretty far along now. Moving forward, I would like to add some UPS slash battery backup, for sure for the NAS, maybe for some of the other small things, um, along with converting a few more machines that I have to rack mount. And then it's really just a function of kind of cleaning up cabling, maybe adding some sort of global rack monitoring with a Raspberry Pi or something like that. But otherwise, I'm quite happy with how things have turned out so far. So that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, suggestions, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you all in another video.